Hello everyone watching this. If you are new to my channel, this is Dr. Sneha and today we will be discussing another topic which is myocarditis. So the name itself says myo which means muscles, card is the heart and itis is inflammation. So this means inflammation of heart muscles. This can be focal or it can be diffuse inflammation of myocardium which leads to damage to its cells leading to edema. Now I want you to know that there are three layers of heart the outermost is the pericarditis the inner one is myocardium which we will be talking about it today and the innermost layer is the endocardium now talking about the types there are two types acute and chronic you already know what is acute and what is chronic acute is something that lasts for a shorter period of time whereas chronic is something that lasts for a longer period of time now i want to draw your attention to another form which is the fulminant form this is rapid progression within hours from a severe febrile respiratory syndrome to cardiogenic shock that may involve multiple organ system leading to renal hepatic failure and coagulopathy now talking about the symptoms the patient usually presents with fatigue difficulty breathing rapid heart rate arrhythmia which can lead to sudden death, palpitations, edema, headache, fever and body ache. Now the symptoms can be variable according to the type. So these are all the common symptoms. I want you to focus on few important points. So whenever a patient presents with chest pain, it may be suggestive of pericarditis or acute MI. And large lymph nodes may be indicative of sarcoidosis. And Fulminant heart failure or arrhythmia is indicative of giant cell myocarditis. Please do remember these points. Now, coming to the patients who do not recover, they end up developing either cardiomyopathy, pericarditis, heart failure, heart attack or stroke and even sudden death. Now, you must be thinking what are the causes of myocarditis. So let's just get into this. So it can be due to mostly viral infections that is Coxsackie, A and B strains, poliomyelitis, influenza, adenovirus or even HIV. There can be bacterial that is diphtheria, TB, typhoid fever, tetanus, staph or even pneumococcal. The parasites and fungi causes are Treposoma cruzi, which is known as Chagas disease, Candida, Aspergillus, or Histoplasma. Connective tissue diseases such as SLE, systemic lupus erythematis, rheumatoid arthritis, Wegener's granulomatosis. Now, there are certain drugs or chemicals which can cause hypersensitivity reaction. And these include penicillin, sulfonamides, anti seizures, cocaine, chronic alcoholism, tetracycline, and even diuretics. And of course, radiation therapy is also a cause of myocarditis. Now, let's focus on what's the pathophysiology. As already said, there are certain etiological factors that may lead to myocarditis. So when these etiological factors occur, they cause viral illness. This viral illness in turn causes inflammation and injury to the myocardium, which decreases the myocardial contractility. As the myocardial contractility decreases, this causes enlargement of the heart, which raises the left ventricular and diastolic pressure which in turn causes left arterial pressure and which leads to pulmonary edema now i also want to add another point that this inflammation and injury caused to myocardium leads to scarring which can lead to this arrhythmia Soon as the heart 
enlarges this decreases the cardiac output which increases the sympathetic tone of the heart leading to congestive heart failure and causing sudden death now coming to the point of diagnosis medical history and physical examination so on physical examination on auscultation we find the pericardial friction drop in pericardial effusion there is elevated gvp that is jugular venous pressure there is significant s3 and s4 heart sounds and systolic murmurs of mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation in ventricular enlargement on ecg we find some features such as sinus tachycardia which is the most common feature inverted t wave st segment usually changes there is av blockage left bundle branch block stmi or non stmi and pathological q wave echocardiogram is also a choice of diagnosis then we also check for serum levels of troponin and creatinine phosphokinase fractions we can do mri so what are the findings of mri in mri we see increased tissue edema and gadolinium enhancement in the mid wall endomyocardial biopsy is the gold standard please do remember this point that endomyocardial biopsy is the gold standard diagnostic now how do you confirm that this is myocarditis as it is usually variable so what is this definitive myocarditis you only confirm that it is definitive myocarditis when there is histological or immunological evidence of inflammation on myocardial biopsy as i have already said that myocardial biopsy is the gold standard so when you find histological or immunological evidence of inflammation on endomyocardial biopsy it is a definitive myocarditis lastly let's get into the treatment please do focus on the treatment really well because there are different types of treatment in different cases so interferon beta 1b is a proven presence of enterovirus in myocardium we can opt for immunosuppressive therapy for autoimmune forms such as we can give prednisolone alone or in combination with azathioprine or even cyclosporine a now this treatment is for acute myocarditis and for stable hemodynamics so what do we do in patients that have stable heart failure in acute myocarditis we go for drugs such as ace inhibitors and arps that is losartan and valsartan we can give arni that is acubitril and valsartan and go for beta blockers and apiliron so in unstable hemodynamics with acute myocarditis we go for diuretics such as furosemide or torosemide vasodilators as nitrates inotropic support by dopamine or norepinephrine treat the arrhythmias by amiodarone or sotalol of class 3 do remember that we only use class 3 drugs and avoid class 1 and class 4 drugs go for anticoagulants heparin for 1 to 2 weeks so we have already talked about the drugs in myocarditis now let's talk about the advanced options in myocarditis so there is implantable cardioverter defibrillator and installment of a pacemaker in inflammatory cardiomyopathy we can also go for heart transplantation now i want you to focus on a key point that is we should ask the patient to limit his physical activity in the acute myocarditis for at least 6 months and once the patient is been treated by acute myocarditis we want you to know that he has to be kept under observation for at least a year so voila guys by this we come to the end of this lecture so that's pretty much it about today's topic myocarditis i tried to make this video as simple as i could uh, in a very basic and uh, yet informative way i hope you have understood this real well and if you did 
find this video helpful please do like comment and share with your friends to get their concepts clear so guys if you have any doubts or any queries regarding this topic myocarditis please please do feel free to ask me your questions and queries and i will be grateful to answer them all so yeah let's see you soon in the next video until then bye bye take care